Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. One of the disadvantages of using Linux is that you cannot natively install Adobe Photoshop. In this video, I'm therefore going to critically evaluate several Photoshop alternatives that can be run in a Linux distribution. Right. Before we look at our potential Linux Photoshop alternatives, I thought we should start out in Windows in Photoshop itself in order to establish its key capabilities. And specifically here, I'm working in a Photoshop CS5, which was one of the last versions you could buy rather than rent from Adobe. And this is a program I use almost every day to do things for either explaining computers or for, for other work. And there are hundreds and hundreds of, of tools and functions here in Photoshop. But for me, at least, there are five key things that any Photoshop alternative absolutely requires. Firstly, there must be good image manipulation tools. So here, for example, I could go to image and maybe adjustments since I don't know, say levels, and I could uh, manipulate this image, change the uh, levels in it. That's a bit stark, isn't it? But then we'll leave that like that for now. So that's there. And there's all sorts of tools down here clone brush, healing brush, all sorts of things for working on the image. Secondly, I think any good Photoshop alternative needs to be able to work with layers. So here, for example, over here, we've got uh, an image from a recent Explaining Computers video built up in layers. Different layers do different things to build up that image. There's, there's clouds there, etc. as you can see. And I sometimes also use layers to build up things like tables in Photoshop for video. You can do tables in, in other packages, admittedly, but I find it handy to work in Photoshop. And here we've got different layers in the table, and we've also got uh, layers inside folders. So I can turn off a whole layer there, or maybe just one bit of it. So using layers is very important for me. Thirdly, and linked to this, I think any good Photoshop alternative must have excellent text handling capabilities. So this is clearly a, a document with text in it. I could go in there and say, change that heading to something else if I wanted to, like that, that would work. And if we look at something a bit more complicated, perhaps, let's bring down here to go to say uh, there, this is a book cover. I've done many book covers in Photoshop. And I'm sure some of you could say you could do book covers in Adobe Illustrator or InDesign. I've done that as well. But I find often working in Photoshop is very handy. And again, we've got editable text here in this document, which we could work on with the different text tools we've got over there. So text handling for me is very important. Fourthly, I think it's absolutely critical that any Photoshop alternative can actually load and save Photoshop document or PSD files. And some of you might disagree with that. You might say a PSD file is a proprietary Adobe format. It is, but often you need to load PSD files into other packages, for example, into a video compositor. Or you might be sharing files with people in the project. They will expect to get PSD files. And finally, I think any decent Photoshop alternative must be able to create and manipulate CMYK images. Now, CMYK stands for Cyan, Magenta, Yellow, Black, and refers to the color model used in physical printing, as opposed to the RGB or red, blue, green system used for screen-based graphics. And you can probably see here, this is actually a CMYK document, this book cover, because obviously it was created for printing. And here in Photoshop, if I did a new document, you could see I could actually select RGB color model, CMYK, etc. And whether that matters for you will depend on the type of work you want to do. But if you want to create things which will be printed by a publisher or a bureau, it's critical that you can work in CMYK. So here we are in Linux Mint, my favorite Linux distribution where I'm going to introduce you to the three Photoshop alternatives I'm going to evaluate in the rest of this video. And I should point out that whilst my focus here is Linux, everything I'm about to show you will also work in Windows. And our first package is going to be this one, which is GIMP. This is a freely downloadable photo editor, lots of functionality, very popular is GIMP. Secondly, we're going to look at Critter, which is a free program with great digital painting functionality, but it's got a lot of wider functionality as well. And finally, we're going to look at this, which is Photopeer, which is a photo editor which runs in a browser. And this again can be used for free if you don't mind having advertising on the side of a screen, or you can pay from $40 a year to use a Photopeer without the advertising. 
Now, in putting this video together, I have evaluated quite a lot of other packages which haven't made the final selection. But I just wanted to point some of these out. So for example, I have looked at uh, this, which is uh, the Pixlr Pro Editor from uh, Pixlr.com, which as you can see, looks very, very similar to a photo peer without the advertising. You have to pay for Pixlr Pro. So I'm not going to look at Pixlr Pro because basically it's the same in terms of function as a photo peer. I also thought about looking at this, which is a Pixlr X, which is a cut down version of the uh, online Pixlr editor. It's not got anywhere near the functionality of Photoshop, but you might find it useful to have a look at it. And there's also a version of Photoshop itself, which is available to use online called the Photoshop Express, which has got very limited functionality. It depends on Adobe Flash, which is not a good idea in a browser these days, but it is available. I thought I should tell you about that. In terms of installed packages, I also had a look at uh, this one, which is Pinter, which is a bit like a Windows Paint on steroids. Again, not massive functionality compared to the other packages, but you might find it useful to know about that. And finally, there's a package which is not a photo editor, but which you can use for Photoshop type work in some circumstances, which is Inkscape, which is actually a vector-based package. And I've got a whole video about Inkscape, so I'm not including it here, but it's worth noting that Inkscape is very nice graphic software, which you can again install for free in Linux. So here I am back again to evaluate GIMP. And what I'm going to do is to score each of the key Photoshop alternative requirements I've identified out of a five, five being best. And the first of the criteria is image manipulation. And here, GIMP does very well indeed. Lots of tools available, lots of functions in the menus. So we could, for example, do levels as I did previously to manipulate this, this plant, give it a bit more punch. Probably too much punch, but never mind. We'll do it. We'll do that to it. There we are. That's that's fine. So five out of five for image manipulation in GIMP. Secondly, we've got layers, and here I've brought in the, one of the documents we're looking at previously in Photoshop, a layer-based document, and uh, this works, again, absolutely fine. We can turn layers on and off. We've also got the ability to change uh, the mode of layers, all the sort of modes available we have in Photoshop. We haven't got the Photoshop layer styles we can apply, things like embossing layers, although you can use various plugins, and so I'm going to give a GIMP a 4 out of 5 for handling layers. Thirdly, we've got text, and text handling in GIMP is pretty good. There's a text tool down here. Once we pick up a piece of text, you can manipulate it in all the normal sort of ways. All the tools are down here. Always also an editor, although it struggled a bit with very large text, as you can see. So text handling is different in GIMP than Photoshop, but it's very good. So I'm going to give GIMP 5 out of 5 for handling text. Next, we've got working with Photoshop documents, PSD files. And here, clearly, I've managed to bring one in because this is a Photoshop document, as we were looking at earlier, that clearly worked. Let's bring in another one. Let's bring in, for example, the um, cooling table we were looking at earlier. And that will load in looking fine. But unfortunately, while everything's come in, all the layers have come in, the groups inside the layers have come in, all the elements here are no longer text. It's converted the text to be a bitmap graphic on the process of bringing it in, so we can't go and edit that text, it would just create us another text layer. And that's quite significant. It means if you bring in a Photoshop document and save it again, you'd lose the ability to edit this text even back in Photoshop. So the fact that text doesn't come in from a Photoshop document is, is not very good. That means I'm going to give it, I think, three out of five for uh, handling Photoshop documents in GIMP. And linked to that, if we go through to thinking about CMYK, let's try and bring in another Photoshop document. We'll open up, for example, the book cover, and this will give us, doesn't work. Error loading, PSD file, unsupported color mode, CMYK. You can't work CMYK natively in GIMP. And uh, this is obvious if we go to do a new document, file and uh, new, and we'll see that the color modes here under advanced options, we have RGB color or grayscale, that is it. And there are plugins to allow GIMP to do conversions from RGB to CMYK, but that really is not good enough for professional work in my view. So I'm afraid GIMP gets 0 out of 10 for working with CMYK. And of course, we'll put all this data onto a table. Here it is. Here are our scores for GIMP. So let's now move on and do our evaluation of Critter. So let's now put Critter through its paces. And here again, we've got very good 
image manipulation tools, lots of tools down here. This is a painting package after all. If we right click, we can bring up the fantastic brush selectors and things. So very good image manipulation in Critter. And we'll do the same thing we've done previously. We've got all the same sort of menu functionality here. Let's change the levels again. Seems to become a standard thing to do in this video for some reason, but there we are. We can move things in like that, move levels around. No, no issues at all. Oh dear, that's a bit stark, isn't it? I'm just randomly adjusting levels there, but clearly all these tools are here. So five out of five for image manipulation in Critter. In terms of layers, once again, I've brought in the uh, SAS Pass IAS uh, document from Photoshop. And again, that works no problems at all. We can uh, turn layers on, off and work with them. And we've also got more opportunities here. If I go to layers, I can actually bring up um, not just properties as we've seen previously in the, the blending styles, but we could also bring up here, if I just close that, uh, I could also bring up our layer styles. Same things we have in Photoshop, drop shadow, embossing, etc. So very good layer handling in the Critter. I'm gonna give this five out of five. If we move on to text, there is text handling in Critter. Here's some text, let's add some more with the text tool. We just click like that. And you'll see it brings up a text editor where we can put in our text. Hello, for example, and we'll make it nice and large potentially because we always do in these videos. Don't we like to make it make, make enormous, enormous bits of text. There we are, that'll, that'll do. And we could save that, we've got some text on the screen. So this text handling is not quite as easy to, to use as it is in Photoshop or in GIMP. So I'm going to give text handling here four out of five. If we move on to PSD files, clearly it can bring some in as we saw there. And also if we bring in the same one we did previously, we'll open up, where is it, our cooling table. And this will open up, hopefully no problems at all. There it is but we have exactly the same issue we had in GIMP. It's converted all the text to a bitmap. So I'm going to give Critter three out of five for handling PSD files. Finally, we get to CMYK. Let's try bringing in the CMYK Photoshop file. First of all, the book cover, which we'll click on like that, which uh, seems to take a bit of time to uh, have a think about. We can go and make a cup of tea, talk to some ducks, all sorts of things, but there it is, it's brought it in. So clearly it can work CMYK. Now, admittedly, again, the text here has been converted to a bitmap, but we can't hold that against it again. The CMYK part of this test is working. And if we do a new document here in Critter, you will see we've got the ability to pick all sorts of color modes and also bit depths inside them. We've got very good CMYK handling in Critter. And so I'll give it five out of five for that capability. And so there we are, two of our packages evaluated and both doing reasonably well. So let's now move to the online photo editor, Photopea, which is available at photopea.com. And this has got a good range of image manipulation tools. We can see them all down here. And again, lots of things available in the, the menus. Let's do some image adjustment stuff again. We'll do levels because we keep doing levels, don't we? So let's just do it again on here in the uh, online package. It's, a, it's amazing this can run in the browser, but it can, but it's very, very impressive that works, no problems at all. So five out of five for Photopea for image manipulation. We'll then move to layers. You'll see I've managed to bring in our Photoshop file. And again, works absolutely fine with the same layer-based stuff we saw previously. And here, if I actually uh, click on that and do blending options, you will see we've got a very, very good set of layer tools. We can set all the blending mode as previously, but we've also got the layer style type things you find in Photoshop available here in Photopea. So again, for layers for Photopea, five out of five. We'll then move to text. There is text handling here, which is also very good. It's a text tool down there. Let's click on this text I've put in earlier. And over here, you'll see there is a character um, dialogue where you can set obviously things like the font, that's all the drop down there. There's lots and lots of fonts available. Uh, we've also clearly got uh, leading, kerning, tracking, baseline shift, all the standard sort of stuff, paragraph adjustment. So good text handling. Again, I think we'll give a five out of five for text handling here in Photopea. Moving on to PSD files, clearly that PSD file came in. Let's bring in another one. Let's try and bring in the uh, active cooling table. We'll open up that and uh, there it is, that has opened up. And the great thing is here, this text is editable. So unlike in uh, GIMP and in Critter, we can go in and actually edit these files and it works 
perfectly well. That's really, really good, isn't it? So we can actually work directly on a PSD file and we can save it back as a PSD file. We've got export as a, there we are, save as PSD sitting there in the menu. So five out of five for working with PSD files. So our final thing is CMYK. And so we'll try bringing in our um, book cover, which is sitting there. Let's try and open that and see what that does. Bigger file to load in, but it's having a think. And uh, it's coming all right. It's actually converted better than it did in, in Critter. Let's get rid of that because it's actually got the right color on that uh, subtitle, which we didn't see previously. The text is, of course, still editable because it was previously. So this is very impressive, isn't it, for an online package, particularly one you can use for free if you don't mind having some advertising on the screen. Is this working CMYK? I don't think it is. I think this is converted to a RGB. Because if we do a new document here, there isn't any control here over uh, the color mode of, of the document. So I can only award a zero to a photo peer for CMYK. But uh, even so, if we look at our table, we'll see some very impressive results for the online photo editor, Photo Peer. GIMP, Critter, and Photo Peer are all great applications. Sadly, as we've seen, none of them provide all of the core functionality that many of us rely on in Photoshop. This said, for me at least, Photopeer is a decent alternative for video and other screen-based work, while Critter is good for print-based tasks, and all the packages are good for photo manipulation. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.